Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. This is part four in the Macintosh Repairathon series. If you haven't watched the previous parts, I recommend you do that now because we'll be picking up right where we left off in the last part. And in that last part, I recapped that Mac Classic motherboard and repaired it and have a working motherboard now. So in this part, I'm gonna test the rest of the chassis with that working motherboard and have to do some things like power supply adjustments and swapping of parts around, including a CRT swap. So let's get right to it. Next chassis, this is the Classic 2 machine number six. I have the working motherboard hooked up. Let's power this on. Well, the screen is pretty dim and I'm gonna say that, that means the battery thing I just did does not work. Actually, uh, no, wait, the date is correct. Okay, so that just means that this screen is terrible. <laughs> okay, I won't write it off completely because there are controls on the back of this analog board that may brighten the CRT. It is very sharp though, so that has that going for it. So what's really apparent to me is with adjusting these controls, this CRT is extremely tired. I can tell by the amount of dirt and soot inside this monitor, this is a high hour picture tube. And therefore turning up the brightness to maximum still results in a very dim picture. It's a lot dimmer than it looks in the camera, but I can see the retrace lines as well. So that's not really workable. To make it look okay, I have to turn it down to about that level right there. And even with this maxed out, it's extremely dim. I've had people try to tell me before that a dim picture is due to bad capacitors on the analog board, but I'm gonna show you that that is probably not the case. Let's swap this picture tube with the one from the Rusty Mac. On the Rusty machine, it's the same Samsung CRT, so I'm just gonna pop the power supply out of here. And just like that, the CRT's out. Now I'm really shocked that this is corroded above where the battery was. That battery literally must have sprayed because the motherboard was sitting back here with the battery facing up towards this area, so I guess it must have sprayed up and somehow corroded the metal there. That's pretty amazing to me. And looking under here, you can really see it's all over the side. It's all over the bottom. The whole thing is just ugly. While I have the machine here, I might as well just take out the floppy drive and the hard drive because I'm not gonna be using this rusty chassis for anything. So I'll just strip it down while I have my chance. There are four screws holding the floppy and hard drive down to the chassis and this fan shroud thing that goes over the motherboard nicely has a hole that gets lets you get to the screw for the floppy drive. There we go, the screw fell in, but... And then to get the front bezel off from this rusty metal chassis, there are about three or four Torx screws around it here, and I'm just gonna pull those off too because the front cover is still usable. It's just this whole metal part is gone. As I touch this thing, rust from the chassis is falling all over the place. So I'm putting it over the trash can here just to try to minimize that from happening and going all over the floor. Am I missing any screws? Ah, oh, yes, there's a clip here. Oh, I gotta put my fingers in the rusty area, yuck. Let's get this over the trash can again. Okay, that goes down like that. And that one's just free floating, so that doesn't seem right. Okay, I'm almost there. There we go. That's one front panel to the Mac Classic. Let me shake out all the rust. Yeah, this front panel's in pretty good shape. It's not too yellowed, and the corrosion only got to it a little bit right here in the corner, but I'm sure that can be cleaned up without any issue, because it's plastic. It shouldn't be affected necessarily by that battery corrosion. And as far as this thing here, I can definitely save this fan. It seems to be okay without any issues. But check out this rust. Oh, it's it's horrible. It's really eaten away at this metal all through here, up there. It's holding together, but uh, for me, it's not really worth saving this thing. And we have one fan. 
And for me, the rest of this metal and this plastic shroud, which is heat staked on there, that all goes in the trash. All right, now I have these two CRTs. I have this one that's labeled as dim, so I, I think this one hopefully is better. So I'm gonna swap over the deflection yokes. So to do this, you just loosen this screw here on both of these and it should slide right off. Ideally, you wanna use a non-magnetic screwdriver since you are dealing with a CRT, even though those are not color ones, these are monochrome. Potentially you could magnetize something, I don't know, and cause some weird geometry issues. All right, with the clamp loosened, you just wanna note the orientation of this. So the sticker's on here and this goes off to that side. So me looking at this way goes off to the left. You just hold the CRT and grab this and you just twist it and it should come loose and then you just gently slide it off. All right, so I have the same orientation and this one, the wire goes this way towards the bottom. So it is different between the deflection yoke on the Classic 2. Sometimes these are kind of stuck on. It's different from the Classic 2 to the regular Classic. So there we go, came free. I'm just gonna stick this one on here as a placeholder and we'll pick this deflection yoke because this is for the Classic 2 and we'll stick that on there. Now, there's a little bit to the placement of this, like you move it back and forth on here and you can twist it for orientation. So I'm just gonna kind of roughly put it on there, tighten this screw down, hold it on so it doesn't fall off. There we go, it still moves a little bit, but that's good enough. And let's install this into the computer. I left the note on the front. <laughs> so we just pop that there, line it up, install the screws into the front to bezel. This is the power slot from the Classic 2. I can tell because it had a yellow sticker up here on the top of the flyback that the other one didn't have. So I'm gonna slide this back in. I'm gonna connect the deflection yoke, connect the fan, because that's a bit of a fiddle and it's a little annoying to do. Make sure these wires aren't caught. Get this in the slot. And then that, you push down and that sort of slots into place. I'm gonna reconnect this ground cable here goes into this corner here. This is absolutely necessary. You must, and I repeat, you must install this. Otherwise you could risk damaging the analog board. Pop the high voltage anode cap on, there it is. Reconnect the yoke board to the back of the CRT. Looking good. Ah, uh, remember when I said there was something floating around in the computer? I think it was actually some screws because there is another screw that was just down here. And I think these are probably from the hard drive. When whoever removed the hard drive from this computer, they must have just thrown these screws back in here. Oh, install one of the screws here to ground the power supply to the chassis. Uh, now I have two stickers on here. So the six sticker is actually for the Classic 2. The five was for the Rusty Machine. So I'll go ahead and install it on this front bezel here. Post-it notes getting a little dirty. It's not sticking so well. Okay, I have the motherboard slid in. Hard drive is connected, as is the mouse. Let's plug in this power cord. Power is off still. I'm gonna use my tool to turn down the sub brightness here because I had it cranked basically to maximum because that last thing is so dim. So I'll just uh, put this in the middle, about halfway up. And we're ready to go. It's the moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Nothing blew up. Okay, this is looking good. Remember I put that brightness in the middle halfway. Now the deflection yoke is on crooked, but that's understandable. I just roughly threw it on. Straighten that out. There we go, it's a bit better. So I hope that's obvious in the camera, but this is far brighter than it was before. First, let's check out what I have the brightness setting set to in the control panel. Let's put it in the midway section. So remember that control I had, this kind of the other brightness control, the one that I said only affected when you had that control panel set to low. I think you set that and then you turn up the knob till you start to see a picture. So there we go, it's all the way at minimum, but I see picture right now. Now on max brightness, I'd say this is about what I would expect for a Macintosh, like for comfortable indoor usage. But remember this CRT, which came out of the number five machine, I had written on the note that it had burn in as well. And I do see burn in. So this CRT is no virgin either, but I'm gonna expect that probably the control should be in the middle for a good comfortable brightness setting on a healthy CRT. So I'll set it in the middle and now I'm gonna turn up the screen control. So I don't see rasters, and I don't see light in the black part around the edges, but that this looks brighter. 
Oh yeah, and there's a lot of range here. In fact, that looks pretty darn bright right now at that middle setting. You could probably turn it down just so slightly. Yeah, that's that looks great. And now there's range, I can still go brighter. Now that's brighter turning this up than I would even wanna use this machine at because it's driving the CRT a little hard anyways. But at that middle setting right there, that looks pretty good. So let me just do a fine tuning adjustment of these other controls, get this looking good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. It's just shifted over to one side a little bit. So I will need to adjust the centering rings. So I'm just adjusting the centering rings and of course it moves it this direction, but that's okay. I can move that back down again using those other controls. I just wanna get it centered. There we go, I'm happy with that. Now I just wanna move it down with the potentiometer. There we go. That looks great. So just as I suspected, that other CRT is toast. It's just simply worn out. It happens as you use a CRT more and more, it gets dimmer and dimmer. And there's only so much you can turn the brightness up until it looks so dim, it's not really usable anymore. In the old days, you would just order a new one to replace it. Nowadays, you can still find these probably new old stock, but they're certainly not being made any longer. But I'm really happy that this Classic 2 has a working CRT. So hopefully when I get that motherboard working, I'll be able to complete this computer and make it look good again. Also, I noticed that when the brightness control is set in the middle, when you turn the computer on, the initials... Well, that's not good. Hmm. I wonder what's going on there. Is this motherboard actually slightly faulty? Let me hit the reset button. Weird, reset doesn't seem to do anything either. Let's try power cycling it again. Huh. Well, that's weird. I wonder what's going on. Now, while I was doing some testing, I was using this motherboard a lot in one of the other Mac classics, and I didn't have any problems like this. So I'm wondering if this power supply board is slightly faulty or potentially just has a bad solder joint or the connector is bad. Let me turn it off and jiggle the power connector going into the motherboard. See if that makes any kind of difference at all. Okay, let's try that again. I, I jiggled the power connector on the motherboard. Nothing. We'd hear the bong if we knew it was working, but we're just getting that, that picture. Well, having weird issues like that, I'm gonna start with the power. I don't think I've ever checked the power on this particular board. The hard drive is spinning. Oh, we're only getting 4.5 volts on the five volt rail. That's kind of low, actually. That's when oh, the hard drive just spun itself down. Let's check the 12 volt rail, 10.8. All right, well, clearly something's wrong with this power supply and that's probably resulting in this checkerboard pattern here, as opposed to a working computer. All right, I have it hooked up to the five volt rail. Let's turn this power back on. Okay, and the computer booted, but it's still low at 4.5 volts. So if I switch this to AC, let's check out what the ripple is. So from a ripple perspective on five volts, we're getting about two millivolts, which is probably fine. And let's check out the ripple on the 12 volt rail. Okay, we're getting about 45, but that's probably okay as well. But 12 volt rail is very low still. So that's definitely problematic. Something's up with this power supply. Could be that there's just a simple adjustment, 4.5 volts. Let me try power cycling and see if the computer goes back into that checkerboard pattern. Yep, we went to checkerboard pattern. So it definitely seems like things are just out of spec with this power supply, at least for the DC supply that goes to the motherboard. Now I'm curious, with the low DC voltage, if this results in low high voltage on the monitor, let's turn this on and hit this button. No, we're getting just under 12 kilovolts, which definitely is correct for this thing. That's, if anything, slightly high. This is probably supposed to run more around 10, but I don't really know what the specs are for this power supply. Now, if you want to see something interesting, let me turn off the computer with the probe activated and you'll see how quickly that high voltage drains away down to zero. It's definitely not the case on some CRTs, it takes longer to bleed, but there's probably a bleed resistor on that analog board, which discharges the high voltage on its own anyways. Turns out that there is a voltage adjustment that's labeled PP1 right on the main board. And I have a little screw uh, tool right in here. See that little potentiometer? That adjusts the five volt rail, or probably the five or the 12, and the other voltage is derived off of it. 
So a little bit of tweaking and we're just over five volts on the five volt rail and you heard the computer bonged when I turned it on. And the 12 volt rail is 12.2, which is completely fine as well. So that was not too difficult of a fix. We'll just turn the computer off and on just for a good test. We heard the beep, so we know it's working. And one thing I wanted to point out before it started crapping out was now that I have that brightness control and the control panel set to the middle and the monitor set appropriately to a good brightness with that control in the center, when you first turn it on, these initial lines that are seen as a test pattern are the correct brightness. Before, when the monitor was badly adjusted and I had to crank the brightness all the way up in the control panel, what would happen is when you first turn on the computer, it would be very dim and only once the system started booting would it then brighten up the screen. So now this looks good even on initial power up and then of course it's nice and bright in the OS. So I've let this computer run for a while and the voltages still seem nice, It's everything's within spec. So with that, I'd say that the Classic 2 chassis is ready to accept its repaired motherboard once I have that. It just needs a good, thorough cleaning. I do want to add that this power supply I took out of the Rusty machine, the number 5 machine, works well. All the voltages are within spec, so this will be good to go into that other Mac that had the bad power supply until I get around to repairing that one. So I've been doing all my testing with a 40 meg hard drive I took out of one of these machines. I've actually forgotten which one it was. This was the hard drive that was in the Rusty Mac, the number five machine. Let's see if this one even works. Even though I haven't removed it from the metal chassis, I can tell that it's a 40 meg hard drive. It looks like a Connor SCSI drive, which is the same one I've been testing with right here. So let's plug this in and see if it works. I did just notice that I wrote bad HD on the number five machine. So I'm not holding out hope that this thing works, but let's give it a try. I just have it plugged in uh, to the power, not to the motherboard right now. So it spun up, it started seeking, and then it just immediately spun down. Hmm, on the second power up, I wanted to demonstrate that it was spinning up and down, but it actually stayed spinning. So maybe it's working now? Let's power cycle one more time. Well, that's weird. It's somehow fixed itself. Maybe the bearings are gummed up and just a little bit of activity has made it work. Let's see if it boots up though. That's the final test. All right, you can see the screen. Let's power this up. Hasn't spun down at least. Oh, look, it's booting. Hmm, but it looks like it froze. So that's not great. It booted a little bit and then froze. Oh, and then it says address error. Okay, let's just hit the reset button. Okay, there's another possibility that the system that's installed on this just is incompatible with this machine. Maybe it needs more than one megabyte of memory, which is all this computer's got right now. This could be system seven. I don't really know. There could be a problem. Maybe there's nothing wrong with this hard drive. So for now, I'm just gonna write a question mark on it and I'll need to format it and try it on a different machine. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna to have to end it here. Here's the faceplate from the number five machine. It gave its life to fix the other machines. It's quite admirable actually. And really I didn't need that many Mac classics. So the fact that I used parts from this machine like the CRT and the power supply really mean that these other machines will live and be a lot better. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do. You can hit that thumbs down button Subscribe for more videos. It also helps my channel if you do hit subscribe. And of course, hit that little bell icon if you wanna be notified when I post new videos. Put your comments and your suggestions down in the comment section below. I appreciate it when you do that. And I read all the comments, or at least I try to. And that's gonna be it. Thank you very much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.